Calculating. Sufficient commendations acquired. Congratulations, user. You have been promoted. Your new rank is General. Updating user access. Command center privileges issued. Please check in at your earliest convenience. designated 
exit slot before entering your launch code, at which point the key card will be consumed. Additional card drops will be brought in by automated convoy should the DEFCON rating continue to worsen. You may speak to your logistics officer as to the location of the pickup for your additional cards, should the circumstances arise. And oh, have they arisen. This DEFCON rating the General speaks of has been pegged at its maximum for some time now. Due to the hazardousness unleashed by our earlier guests. The silver lining of this is that one can often find a keycard convoy en route somewhere in Appalachia. We're happy to use our restored surveillance tools to help you track them. Access any of the surveillance system terminals to initiate your hunt. To prevent misuse of Appalachia's automated missile silos, Security measures for the region's nuclear arsenal have been increased well beyond any of our existing standards. Each silo has its own eight-digit launch code, which is valid for a single week. These codes are broken into eight individual number letter pairs, each carried by a designated officer who is under strict orders to guard their code piece with their life. The order of numbers has been encrypted using a series of methods to prevent improper deployment. The bunker staff of specially trained code decryptors will provide the officer corps with the code when it is renewed each week. The decryptors, it should come as no surprise, are dead. It will be up to you and your fellow members to decrypt each silo's launch code before they are regenerated. We, however, might be able to help. We've gathered all the information we could recover related to the codes and their encryption in the archives on this floor. It's also our belief that the flip card displays in this room had something to do with the code. What exactly, we leave up to you and your compatriots to uncover. And we are more than happy to use our surveillance systems to track down the last known locations of these code-bearing officers. Just approach any of our surveillance terminals. Now. With that out of the way, it's about time you got your hands dirty. There are a few key paths you should explore. Acquiring a nuclear key card, hunting down a few code officers, and delving into the nature of the launch code's encryption in our archives. Everything you need to get started, you should find in this space. How to proceed, though, we leave up to you. But please, feel free to ask our terminals if you have any questions. Good hunting, General.
you doing hanging around here? He killed David through the viewfinder. <sighs> so that's a thing that happened. Hey, I'm hoping that by now you've got everything we need. Hurry back so we can bust that cash wide open and see what's inside. No one's been inside since before they made me, so I've been dying to see all the great crap they've kept hidden for all these years. Don't keep me waiting. fragments for me. I'll take those for safekeeping. There's just one more little thing. David, he had a mistress named Rosalind. She wound up doing something stupid out of love for the man. Tried to lead a raid on Charleston on Christmas Eve so she could bring him back something nice. Got herself killed in the process. We never were able to recover the body. I would have gone to do this myself, but well, it's personal. Now, in order to create the cash master key from those passwords you got, I need the holotape program she had with her when she died. You might have to look through the town's records to find out where they buried her body. I'd start with the Capitol building. That's the last thing, I swear. Then we're golden. Meet me at the cash in the basement of the ski lodge when you got that holotape. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. It's in the mire. I can point you in the right direction. 
Now, go on and scram. Maybe you'll actually be able to get rid of these scorched things. Then, bing, bang, boom, couple hundred years pass, you fall, people have a couple of kids, they have a couple of kids, etc. Next thing you know, we got more raiders and more people to prey on. Perfecto! Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. But until then, I'll just be messing with the radio. <laughs> Don't you forget about me up here. I'm always around if you get bored. <laughs> Later, alligator. shoved it through the storage system. You'll probably need to bring it to someone in the free states who can fix it. The <laughs> joke's on you. They're as dead as everyone else out there. Do you need You know, help at least one or two of them defected luggage. to us when they got sick of living underground. They talked about this real smart gal named Abby. Tech smart, you know? I bet you can find something down in her bunker that'll help you fix that doodad. It's in the mire. I can point you in the right direction. Now, go on and scram. Maybe you'll actually be able to get rid of these scorched things. Then, bing, bang, boom, couple hundred years pass, you fall, people have a couple of kids, they have a couple of kids, etc. Next thing you know, we got more raiders and more people to prey on. Perfecto! Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. But until then, I'll just be messing with the radio. <laughs> Don't you forget about me up here. I'm always around if you get bored. <laughs> Later, alligator.
Rogers Law, Free State Bunker. Sam Blackwell and Raleigh Clay. Those damn traitors and their secessionists turned their backs on America to form their free states. Concrete bunkers. You'd never get that past a vault tech radiation proofing inspection. That's for sure. Sounds like they let go of their paranoia long enough to seek out help from the other survivors. Just have to hack this terminal. trying to finish what he called the Scorch Detection System. The system will let you know when the Scorched are coming and has the means to help deal with the Scorch Beasts. If you can help, I've created a set of recorded instructions to complete the system. First, you need to find the final communications uplink, and chances are high it'll need repairs. We entrusted it to a guy named Madigan and told him to place it on the antenna at top of the world. Find the uplink. You can use my workbench here to repair it. Then, check in at the main SDS terminal to trigger my next recording. If you're still there, I really hope you're willing to help a dead girl out. If so, good luck. And if not, well, enjoy dealing with the Scorched. And if by some chance this is Madigan, your timing sucks. that or you want more info, you can always check my workstation terminal. It's all there. Good luck.
was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up.
darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. No, God! No, God! Please, no! 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 Overseer's log, Camp Venture. Just who was this Brotherhood of Steel? Survivalists? Former army personnel? They, they took their training and their call signs seriously, that's for certain. Organized, efficient, access to hardware? You'd think they'd be ruling West Virginia by now. But they're gone. If they're following military logic, then they'll have a fortified headquarters somewhere. And a leader. Someone who knew what they were planning. July 15th, 2079. Wow. Who would have thought a, a little radiation would turn this world upside down? We were down in those bunkers for what, a couple of years? There's no way radiation did all this all by itself in that amount of time. I mean, first off, this place is crawling with those, those orange red vines, the likes of which there, there is no precedent for. I saw a toad that wouldn't even fit in a bathtub. A 12 point with two heads. Be still my heart. And insects. Oh, you don't even want to know about. I've started taking samples for analysis. Hopefully the plants can still be used for some good old holistic treatments. Raleigh's getting to work on a series of tests for the water and soil. I don't know. I guess we can count ourselves lucky the air is breathable. But this place? I grew up here. And I barely recognize it. There's no way we were prepared for this. Toxicity levels, slight mutations, yes. But uh, I'm telling you, Darwin would lose his mind out here. Um, come on, let me up. What the hell's going on here? Uh, what's this meant to be? It's a reference to someone, but I don't know what. Okay, we've got four tries. Um, Aha, uh -huh, there we go. There, ah, that's easy enough. Close the door.
should mean you've got yourself five upgraded detector motors and one working uplink. Now for the fun part. First, you need to repair the damaged scorch detectors in the mire. Second, that communications uplink needs to be set up on the antenna at top of the world. You may or may not have encountered a lovely Miss Nanny there that goes by the name Rose. I programmed a whole tape you want to give her along with the uplink. It explains how she can benefit from all this and get her to help us out. The only way we get that uplink set up is through that Miss Nanny. And finally, once you're done, you get to come all the way back here. Yep, that's right. We're not done yet. Time is long overdue. Won't you stay and listen to a story so I may finally continue my other tasks? C'est terrible. Let's begin, shall we? There was once a young girl named Little Red Riding Hood whose grandmother was sick, so she made up a basket of goodies to deliver to her. Now, Little Red's Miss Nanny advised her to stay on the path and not take any shortcuts because Miss Nannies are programmed for children's safety. But it was starting to get late, and Little Red Riding Hood chose to take a shortcut so that she could get to her grandmother in time. A big bad wolf saw the girl and started following her. Suddenly, he appeared in front of her and asked where she was going. I'm going to my sick grandmother's house on the other side of the forest with this basket of goodies, the naive girl replied. The wolf suggested that Little Red Riding Hood pick some nice flowers to bring to her and showed her a nearby meadow where she could do that. She thanked him, and while Little Red Riding Hood was picking flowers, the wolf ran off ahead to her grandmother's house. The wolf swallowed the grandmother whole. He disguised himself in her clothes and waited in her bed for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. When Little Red Riding Hood finally arrived, she went inside to see her grandmother. But something seemed strange to the girl. What a deep voice you have, she said to her grandmother. The better to greet you with, my dear, replied the wolf. What big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to see you with, replied the still hungry wolf, looking at Little Red Riding Hood. But what big teeth you have, Grandmother, said Little Red. The better to eat you with, replied the wolf. Then he jumped up and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood too. Then he curled up and went to sleep. Just then, the Miss Nanny burst through the door. She cut open the wolf's belly with her saw, freeing Little Red Riding Hood and her Grandmother. The end. Remember that Miss Nanny is programmed to guarantee the safety of children. Yes, dearie? 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 